<laughs> yes guys, welcome back to another video here on the Andy Hashtag One channel. I'm joined as always by goalkeeper extraordinaire Lewis Hawes for a warm-up special. We've had loads of comments previously about how I used to, used to warm up, how I'd take my goalkeepers through a warm-up, pre-game warm-up. So we're going to show you how. Ready for this? Yeah, let's go. Right, we're going to talk you through a number of exercises that we feel gets you a good solid warm-up prior to playing a game. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so to start the warm-up, we're going to start with a jog. Nothing out of the ordinary here is a standard beginning of the warm-up type exercise. Uh, there's just Lewis and I here, so we're just going to have the jog, just the two of us. You can incorporate the rest of the team, obviously, or you incorporate with the rest of the team exercise. Good social aspect to that if you haven't already met everyone and chatted in the changing rooms beforehand. We're also going to incorporate a few light dynamic stretches to this beginning at a part of the warm-up, um, just to start loosening off and raise your heart rate. Now from the jog, we're going to get into some dynamic stretches. I always need to stretch out my lower back and play, pay a close attention to that. So I always got a couple of exercises um, to help my lower back and to make sure that's mobilized properly before playing. Uh, this stretch here is called the greatest stretch in the world ever. Also, it was by the person who taught me it, uh, which was James Ralph. If, if you're on Instagram, go follow him. Uh, Athletes Edge, JR underscore Athletes Edge for some fantastic football focused exercises um, so this stretch here stretches out literally everything um, hip flexors groins uh, your glutes or your bum as well as well as your back um, and literally everything in between it's a really good stretch and it's something that I try and do quite regularly actually in order to maintain the, the little flexibility that I have uh, trying to increase that range of motion um, it's something like I say I try and do quite regularly. Lewis has his own stretch set of stretches that he likes to go through as well. Um, this one here stretching out his calves. Uh, I've also got to pay close attention to my hip flexors as well actually. Uh, I spend a lot of time down at the desk, sitting at a desk uh, and a lot of time cycling which doesn't help my hip flexor flexibility. Uh, stretch here that Lewis is going through really concentrates on the glutes so looking at that bum muscle uh, making sure that's nice and stretched before playing uh, try and do everything both sides obviously and make it as dynamic as possible within the warm-up to keep your heart rate as raised uh, as it is throughout the warm-up don't let your heart rate drop from the dynamic stretches then into ball work i always like to work from the ground up uh, for some reason there's no logic behind that at all but uh, i like to start with the feet uh, it's just a bit of one touch passing here, nice and light on the feet. Make sure you use both right foot and left foot. Uh, if you need to take two, take two, but majority of time I like to take one touch passing. Um, and then from just stationary one touch passing, then add a little bit of movement to this. So this is now forwards and backwards movement. So again, it's a very game related type movement. You spend a lot of time moving backwards and forwards. Uh, you, you need to keep really light on your feet as you're doing this. And again, it's just one touch passing, taking it in turns, getting quite close, get adjusting yourself to the ball uh, and making sure you're moving this ball as quickly as possible. Adjusting your feet, like I say, uh, accordingly, using your right and left foot. And I just find this is a really good exercise to get a bit bouncy and a bit light on my feet, which again is something that I like to work on, especially during the warm. If I feel I'm moving my feet eat well I feel like I'm gonna play well next exercise that we're gonna go on to is volleys again it's kind of a, a standard warm-up that you'll see or standard exercise that you see many goalkeepers going through and I think it's just because of the simplicity of it I mean volleys is something where there's always question marks about goalkeepers how many volleys do they face but in this instance it's about getting the ball in the gloves and just getting used to catching the ball to start off with Generally as well, dependent on which age group you're working with, but volleys seem to be uh, more accurate. Jeff, definitely for myself, um, apart from that one, of course. Then uh, again, it's just more about getting the ball into the gloves and catching the ball, um, seeing the ball as early as possible, getting good shapes within the ball, getting used to then just getting the ball in the gloves, getting used to the conditions as well is a big thing here. Uh, I mean, we're playing in the evening, so we've got to get used to the lighting. Sometimes it's different. Sometimes you play at stadiums which has different lighting. Sometimes you play, uh, like saying, different conditions, whether or not it's wet. Getting the ball in the gloves is really important for confidence, I think, uh, just before a game. So we seem to do a lot of that. And then to take it on one step is just then 
follies but with movement again going back i said that i feel that if i'm moving my feet well then i'm going to play well so this is just another added exercise where just generally moving the feet uh, lateral movement couple of steps either side nice and light on the feet using the balls of the feet try not to let your heels touch the ground moving with that balance nose slightly over toes moving on to uh, some diving some low diving left to right Again, this is all personal preference. One thing I think I always need to work on is just attacking the ball uh, when diving. I've got a tendency to dive flat, to dive straight to my side. So I find that this exercise is really simple, but I find that it means well, it encourages me to step forward and attack the ball to make sure I'm, I'm out at that 45 degree angle. To step out and then to go over my knees, what I'm supposed to be doing here, um, I just find it really helps me do that. So then as we work up higher within the body, then that initial step out is going to be then an aggressive, more aggressive line. It's going to be out forward, which means I'm more likely to come forward to the ball. I get bigger distance on my dives by doing that. Um, and I just by doing this as well it's also the balls across the floor so it does also give that extra how does the ball roll on the floor type um, getting that information in early um, again lots of reps on the ball um, just before the, uh, the game starts so it means that you just feel a little bit more confident with the ball in your gloves so then from low dives on the floor it's now those mid type dives and again it's just repetition to start off with and again moving feet two things you might have heard uh, quite a few times throughout this i feel like i'm moving my feet well i feel like i'm going to play well so now it's just that backwards movement and now it's incorporating that with that forwards dive so that's the initial 45 degree step up forward and then just over your knee ball into hands take the ball up and do it again it's this sort of thing I might do maybe five times on each side. Crossing, always something doing before the game. Again, it's just making sure that you can see the ball early, you're seeing the ball well, you're able to take it under the condition. So in this case, it's the lights and understanding what that light position looked like. So it's just someone swinging it in from one side, swinging it in from the other side, coming forward, attacking that ball, taking it at the highest point. And then also adding some distribution in there as well. Um, dependent on where you're playing and, and what the groundsman says of what you can and can't use within the pitches before the game. Uh, sometimes you don't get that much space to, to warm up in. Um, but I always like to just finish this with a throwback, with a rollback, with a kick off the floor back, or as Lewis is perfectly demonstrating there, a side volley back um, out of your hands, just so it's not the full length of the pitch, but again, it is just helping with that um, distribution element to ensure that when you get into a game, you've actually done some kicking before and you've done some kicking out of your hands. This is a kind of reaction exercise for me. It's a turning off the post, um, move drop to the line, and then you're just facing a shot straight away. So you're working on a, a service call generally, and they're trying to hit the ball as hard as possible. Again, it's one of those things where you're just trying to see the ball as early as possible, react to it, and then make a save. Generally, I don't do a lot of actual shot stopping before a game. I know some goalkeepers, Lewis, for example, was talking about how he likes to have shots from certain positions within the box, just so he's used to it. This is the kind of thing that I like to do to make sure that I'm picking the ball up early. I've got the reactions in order to make the save. Um, it's a good one. I like it. Hit the ball hard as well beforehand. And then finally, just to finish up, just some kicks off the floor. In this case, we're just going uh, into that goal, but this is the kind of thing you'd be looking at. Um, general di distribution in the game. Yes, guys, thanks for watching that video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure to drop a like on it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. More goalkeeping content coming soon. Thanks for watching. See you all soon.